What if the Stuka pilot passed out in the dive bombing? Flying at 15,000 feet, the pilot located his target through a bombsite window in the cockpit floor. Then he pilot moved the dive lever to the rear, limiting the throw of the control column. The dive brakes were activated automatically. The pilot set the trim tabs, reduced his throttle and closed the coolant flaps. The aircraft then rolled 180 degree, automatically nosing the aircraft into a dive, and red tabs protruded from the upper surfaces of the wing as a visual indicator to the pilot that, in case of a G-force induced blackout, the automatic dive recovery system would be activated. The Stuka dived at a 60 to 90 degree angle, holding a constant speed of 310-370 miles per hour due to dive brake deployment, which increased the accuracy of the Stuka's aim. When the aircraft was reasonably close to the target, a light on the contact altimeter came on to indicate the bomb release point, usually at a minimum height of 1,480 feet. The pilot released the bomb and initiated the automatic pullout mechanism by depressing a knob on the control column. Physical stress on the crew was severe. Human beings subjected to more than 5G in a seated position will suffer vision impairment in the form of a gray veil known to Stuka pilots as seeing stars. They lose vision while remaining conscious. After five seconds, they black out. The Stuka pilots experience the visual impairments most during pull-up from a dive. Eric Winkle Brown RN, a British test pilot and commanding officer, said of the Stuka, I had flown a lot of dive bombers and it's the only one that you can dive truly vertically. Sometimes with the dive bombers, maximum dive is usually in the order of 60 degrees. When flying the Stuka, because it's all automatic, you are really flying vertically. The Stuka was in a class of its own. Thank you for watching.